There are many different types of scientific meetings. Some of them are very large, a thousand or more people. The interactions uh, between people, sometimes you can hardly find somebody you know is at the meeting. The advantage of meetings like the Keystone Symposia are the size of the meetings. Uh, they are quite intimate, uh, everybody meets everybody. Um, and they are very interactive. If I go to really big meetings, could be those really particular interest group will come and see my poster. But here, we got the chance to communicate over a very small but specific community. You have a lot of questions and discussions during the presentations, but even more importantly, uh, in the poster sessions and the tea and coffee breaks uh, uh, in between. It was a really new experience to kind of um, just present our work at the poster sessions and um, really get some feedback and comments from fellow scientists as well as key opinion leaders who are attending the conference and I think that's very helpful when you're a young scientist, you're trying to formulate your thoughts, you're trying to get feedback um, on the work that you're doing and I think that's very helpful. So it really provides the ideal um, milieu if you like. It's a great uh, meeting format. The Hong Kong University of, is dedicated to the highest uh, quality of uh, education. We really try to focus on mentoring uh, our young scientists, uh, giving them the inspiration to, to allow them to, to have the freedom, but also the interactions to be able to prosper. And I think uh, in that regard, our targets m blend well with a meeting such as the Keystone because this allows young researchers to be able to speak at a meeting like a Keystone Symposium in front of world eminent researchers. So it builds up their confidence. It's really an uh, excellent uh, interaction and an excellent uh, opportunity. Travel awards like these ones that the Keystone Symposium provides really enables young scientists to um, kind of travel outside their comfort zone and to be able to really communicate um, the science that you've been working on which I think is really good training for in the future when you have to understand the story that you're, you're trying to um, come up with, with the science that you're working on. Keystone Symposia are really um, great in the sense that they uh, have the flexibility to bring in new topics for, for meetings. Of course, it has the brand recognition and the credibility to, to encourage you know, the, the, the leaders in, in respective fields to, to attend and speak uh, at these meetings. I think this particular Keystone uh, Symposium is timely and important because uh, we have had a number of uh, major uh, viral threats in the last few years. Uh, we had Ebola, we had Zika, we have had repeated avian influenza uh, outbreaks. Uh, and of course we have an ongoing threat with MERS. So this Kisto meeting gave us this opportunity for, uh, to learn the fresh data and the um, earliest research in each lab so we can um, get more collaboration and uh, get more communication with uh, the scientists all over the world. The idea was to bring together people working on all these different emerging viruses uh, to to, to the same meeting. So this was really nice because we had people we normally don't talk to on a regular basis, but of course we share the same interest in that we are all trying to confront unexpected emerging respiratory viruses. And I think in that regard, it was uh, successful and it has been an exciting experience.